Back it comes to Lilligren. Matthews shoots, scores! Number 50 for Austin Matthews in his backyard! How can you stop this? This is when the Leaf hater in me would just comment, just wait for the first round. But we've just finished February, and through 58 games, Austin Matthews currently has 53 goals. Adjusting for era, Austin Matthews is currently on pace to have the second best scoring season of all time. In a season where the MVP race has been largely dominated by two horses, Austin Matthews has forced himself in the conversation by becoming the fastest player to hit 50 goals since Mario Lemieux did it in the 95 and 96 season. What we're witnessing right now is NHL greatness. And when you look at how Austin Matthews has been able to do this in the modern era of the NHL, we're watching arguably one of the greatest goal scorers of all time at his peak. To give some perspective of exactly how dominant Matthews has been this season, he's on pace to end the year off with 77 goals. The level of consistency to which he's put the puck in the back of the net is proof that we're witnessing potentially the greatest and most efficient goal scorer of the modern era. To understand how Matthews scores goals, we have to understand where he scores his goals. What shouldn't shock anyone is that a large portion of his goals are scored in the house area. In the offensive zone, Matthews understands how to find gaps better than anyone. By timing his arrival in space, he becomes extremely difficult to contain. Depending on the team, some teams play zone coverage on defense while other teams play man on man. In both situations, Matthews finds the soft spots and makes the other teams pay. Here against Columbus, the Jackets are playing man on man as the Leafs get into their 2-3 offensive zone structure. Now typically, Toronto wants their best players with possession up high in the zone so that they can make a play with space. This three-player system high near the blue line traditionally does very well against zone coverage, and that's because as teams sit back and try to protect the house, it can open up space for offensive players to create offense up high. But in a man-on-man -man defense, that space is taken away from you if played right. So with Marner swinging up high, Matthews is going to climb up as well. But instead of continuing his path to the blue line, he turns away to lose his check. The Columbus player gets overly aggressive, assuming Matthews would go up high with him as well. Marner makes a great read and an even better pass to Matthews, who all of a sudden has space to use his wrister, and it's in the back of the net. Even when teams are using a zone coverage, the Leafs use a lot of motion up high, and Matthews attacks the gaps in coverage. Defending teams can even be in a strong position with numbers back, but Matthews requires very little space to make you pay. This play specifically sees all five Rangers in a decent defensive posture, but Matthews reads where the attention is of the defenders and attacks the blind spot in coverage. With everyone puck watching, Matthews slips right in between these two checks and notice the speed and timing as well. He doesn't pump his legs to explode into the gap, he just subtly sneaks into the gap and the release is world class. Matthews uses his hockey IQ and knowledge of defensive coverages to consistently put himself in the right spots to get a quality shot. It's when Matthews gets in these spots where he truly separates himself from the rest of the league. There are a lot of intelligent goal scorers in the NHL who find these pockets of space like Matthews, but none of them can release the puck the same way that he does. Whether it's his patented catch and release or one-timer in a tight space, he requires almost zero time to rip a shot off. This is because his first touch of the puck is usually flawless. To catch a bullet of a pass like this and release the puck all in one motion is a skill that almost no one can do like Matthews. When working in tight spaces where Matthews scores his goals, his first touch needs to be flawless. Sometimes it's as simple as a clean one-timer, but other times it requires a bit more finesse. More than any other goal scorer, Matthews frequently takes pucks from an awkward area and puts it in a threatening position. Multiple times this year, we've seen Matthews take a puck from behind his back, put it through his legs, and place it in a position for him to make a play. The guy flat out has a magnet stick, and anytime the puck is in his vicinity, he somehow finds a way to put it on his blade for him to shoot. You combine this kind of precise touch with the patience, and you get goals like this one against the Islanders. So many players in the league would get wide-eyed when they see a loose puck like this in the crease, but not Matthews. 
Instead of trying to force this puck, his first touch is to pull the puck tight into his body and then instantly over to his backhand. This kind of finesse and patience with the puck is so hard to have and it's why no one is scoring at the rate that Matthews is. Even when he's outside of the dangerous areas of the ice, his first touch and awareness to attack makes him a threat from anywhere on the ice. This puck here is behind the net with a defender in pursuit, but a quick hook of the puck over to his backhand allows him to strike at the net and catch everyone by surprise. Even from along the wall, where goals shouldn't go in, Matthews is still a threat. As a goal scorer, he's aware of when goalies may be cheating off of their post or are simply not expecting a low and hard shot. And this type of shot is an intelligent one too. Even if the goalie does anticipate it and make the save, it likely creates a rebound for a Toronto player to bang one in. He scored his 50th of the season just like this, and he will make you pay if you don't fully respect his shot. Now what's even more impressive about Matthew's game is that he doesn't cheat for offense. He leads all fours in the NHL in stick checks, he's 5th in block shots, and 15th in block passes. Whether he's using his stick to strip pucks, or his big 6'3 frame to lean into guys and win battles along the wall, he's constantly turning pucks into possession for Toronto. Now a big reason why Matthews has been able to score at this incredible pace is also because of his partner in crime in Mitch Marner. Behind every great goal scorer is a great playmaker. We've seen just how great Matthews is at finding soft spots in coverage, but it's Marner's vision and passing ability that allows Matthews to become the most elite version of himself. A large component to Matthews' ability to score in goals is timing. As a playmaker, Marner's number one job is to complement this timing. Whether it's having the patience of holding onto the puck and allowing Matthews to get into his spot, or quickly getting him the puck before defenders can read the play, Marner has been instrumental to getting the puck to Matthews at the right time. When you have the chemistry that these two players have, a lot of it becomes instinct and feel, and that there is your best friend in hockey. Now, perhaps the craziest stat of all of what Matthews is doing is that he should actually have more goals than he does as he leads the league in post hit. Despite that, he hit 50 goals in February with a month and change left to go in the regular season. To score 50 goals in the modern NHL is an incredible achievement, but to score 70 plus is something that we haven't seen in over 30 years. Matthews is already one of the greatest goal scorers the NHL has ever seen. And while it remains to be seen how many he can score in his later years, there is currently no better goal scorer in the world than Austin Matthews.